The table below shows the average number of hours students spend studying for classes each day in the high school. Is the average number of hours dependent on the type of student? What would you say? Based on the question, we need to perform a test of independence, but using a chi-square distribution. So the first thing we need to do is complete the contingency table. So let's find the totals of each column. 76 plus 147 is 223. 143 plus 109, that gives us a total of 252. 91 plus 64 is 155. Now let's find the total of the last row. 223 plus 252 plus 155 gives us a total of 630. Now let's find the totals of the other two rows. 76 plus 143 plus 91, that's gonna be 310. 147 plus 109, plus 64 gives us 320. 310 plus 320 is 630. Now before we move on to the next table, let's talk about the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. So the null hypothesis is that the average number of hours is independent of the type of student. The alternative hypothesis, this is what we want to test, we're testing to see if the average number of hours is dependent on the type of student. Now to calculate the degrees of freedom, it's going to be the row minus one times the column minus one. So in our contingency table, we have two rows for the freshmen and the seniors. So that's going to be two minus one. And we have three columns. It could be in the first two hours, two to four hours or 46 hours. So C is three. Two minus one is one, three minus one is two. So we have two degrees of freedom. The test of independence is typically a right tail test. So this is gonna be the shape of our chi-square distribution. This is gonna be the location of our critical value and this is the rejection region. So the area to the right, which is the area of the rejection region, this is gonna be alpha, which is 0 0.05. What we need to do is determine our critical chi-square value and compare that to our calculated chi-square value. If our calculated chi-square value falls in a rejection region, we are going to reject the null hypothesis. If it falls below the critical value, we are not going to reject the null hypothesis. So here is the chi-square distribution table, and we had two degrees of freedom, and the area to the right of the critical value, we said is alpha 0 0.05. So that gives us our critical value of 5.99. So I'm just gonna mark that here. So our CV value is 5.99. And let's get rid of the graph for now because the space will be needed. Now the next thing we need to do is get the expected values so that we could fill in this table. Now here's the formula to calculate the expected values. It's going to be the row total times the column total divided by n. So let's focus on this entry. So for that entry, the row total is 310. So I'm going to write E 1 comma 1 because this is in the first row, first column. RT is 310. CT, the column total, is 223 divided by n, which will always be 630. That's the total number of students. So we have 310 times 223 divided by 630, and that gives us 
109.7. Now let's repeat the process. So moving on to the next entry, that is in the first row, second column. So the total for that row is still 310. Column 2 has a total of 252. And we're going to divide that by 630 again. So this should give you 124. You know what? I'm going to round up 109.7 to 110 since we're dealing with people and it should be a whole number. So that's going to be 110 and this is going to be 124. Now moving on to the next one, we have the first row, third column. So that's this entry. The row total for the first row is 310. The total for column 3 is 155. And this will be divided by 630. So this is 76.3, which we are going to round it to 76. So taking the total for that row, 110 plus 124 plus 76, that will give us 310. Now, let's move on to the second row. So this is going to be E, 2 comma 1. So second row, first column, the row total is going to be 320. Column 1 has a total of 223, and this will be divided by 630. So 320 times 223 divided by 630 gives us an expected result of 113, rounded to the nearest whole number. So now row 2, column 2, that's that entry. The row total is 320, and the column total is 252. So this gives us 128. And then row 2, column 3, for that entry, the row total is still 320. Column total, 155 over 630. Seventy-eight point seven. so we're going to round that to 79. Now let's take the total for that row. So 113 plus 128 plus 79 gives us a total of 320. So we get the same 630. And if we add up the columns, 110 plus 113 gives us 223 again. 124 plus 128 is 252. And then 76 plus 79 is 155. So now we have the expected table completed. We can move on to the next step. So the next thing we need to do is get the calculated chi-square value. And the formula that we're going to use is this. It's going to be the sum of the observed values minus the expected values squared over the expected values. So starting with the first entry, the observed value is 76, the expected value is 110. So this is going to be 76 minus 110 squared divided by 110. For the second entry, that is row 1, column 2, we have an observed value of 143. The expected value is 124. So that's going to be 143 minus 124 squared divided by the expected value of 124. And then we're just going to repeat the process for all six entries. Next is 109. And then the last one, 64 
minus 79 squared divided by 79. So now I'm going to take a minute to do the math here. Feel free to try it as well. So the first one is about 10.5091. And then the next one Two point nine one one three and then this is two point nine six zero oh five and then ten point twenty three. This one is 2.8203. And then for the last one, 2.8481. Now let's take the total of these numbers. So I got a large value. The total is 32.28. So that's going to be our calculated chi-square value. So we can round that to 32.3. So now that we have that, let's go back to our picture. So we have a right tail test. Our critical value is 5.99, and our calculated chi-square value is 32.3. So the area of the shaded region is 0.05, and the area of this region is 0.95. So because our calculated chi-square value lies to the right of the critical value, given a right tail test, it falls in the rejection region. So therefore, we must reject the null hypothesis. So we have strong evidence to suggest that the average number of hours is dependent on the type of student. So we can clearly see that seniors spend a lot less time studying than freshmen in high school based on the data. Perhaps they have a case of senioritis.